Hello, my friends. Um, to go along with the roast turkey, I thought it would be really nice to make some stuffing. Um, I made this cornbread um, about a week ago now, and it tasted really, really, really good. I found a really cool uh, trick. Now notice that it was so moist that it kind of fell in, <laughs> but the, the flavor was almost like a corn pudding custard. And the trick that I found was one, is to substitute um, from a, just a regular cornbread recipe, the milk for condensed milk, sweetened condensed milk. Then the other thing I added was some frozen corn. And those two things together gave this beautiful custardy, delicious sweetness to the cornbread that was just phenomenal. So we're gonna use this cornbread and we're going to make some stuffing out of it. So quickly, um, I'm just gonna cut this up into cubes. Um, and we're also gonna dice um, some onions and celery. And I thought it would be fun to do sort of a, a simple knife skill course um, while I'm cutting the celery and the onion. Um, I think knife skills are so important in the kitchen. And I would say probably the most important chef tool is a great knife, right? And it doesn't mean necessarily that it's an expensive knife, but it does mean that it's a sharp knife. Um, and the way you hold the knife and just simple um, ways to cut produce and meats um, can really make you a skilled cook and chef. It really makes the difference between, um, I think, really being comfortable in the kitchen and knowing what you're doing and really feeling like cooking is not fun and sucks is a, is a good knife and then knowing how to use it. So anyway, um, I'm just cubing this up. I'm gonna talk a little bit about like other breads you can use. Honestly, um, the store-bought like stovetop stuffings um, can be really wonderful if you give it some extra love. And what I mean by that is like dicing some apples and raisins and walnuts or pecans and adding that to the stovetop recipe can make for incredible stuffing. And then you don't have to worry about the bread part. But I find white bread to be um, probably the worst choice for stuffing just because it kind of produces this very gummy, wet stuffing. I don't find it enjoyable. So I think something with more hardiness to it, um, even like a baguette would be better than just like Wonder Bread. So um, I'm gonna start by, I'm just gonna put this cornbread that I diced up into a Pyrex dish. You can use any sort of baking casserole that you have. And just kind of put in the crumbs. And then we're gonna start with our simple knife skill class. All right, so knife skill 101. <laughs> Number one is a good cutting board, a sharp knife. Um, one thing that is a, a good protection is to take a piece of paper, like a paper towel, and wet it and put it underneath the board. That gives it some stability because the last thing you want is your cutting board to slip, right, while you're cutting something. The other thing I found super useful is a simple sharpener like this. Um, you can get your knives professionally sharpened. There's more expensive sharpeners on the market, but something as simple as this where you'll uh, basically put your knife like this and put it down this way. I'm not going to use this right now because my knife is dirty and I don't want to clog this thing up. But you just kind of hold this and put it about 10 times on the coarse and then just maybe 5 times on the fine. Um, will make for a really nice sharp knife and keep your knife sharp just quickly and easily. Um, so, let's start with the quintessential thing to chop. Um, when you first start is this wonderful onion. All right, so this onion is round and it rolls around. 
and you don't want to be chasing this around the cutting board, right? So um, what I recommend is making anything that's round and not stable flat to produce stability, right? So that's the first step is to take our beautiful onion and cut it in half carefully. I would you stabilize it with this hand and then cut it in half. All right, great. Now we have the root end and the stem end of the onion. You could even look inside. That would be the stem that would, be, would grow out from underground. Um, keep the root end intact. That'll keep your onion together while you're chopping it. I always find that taking a little bit of the edge of the onion off makes peeling it so much easier, right? So it gives you like something to hold on to while you're peeling it. Okay, so now the onion is layered beautifully like this, right? So a lot of chefs will cut the onion three ways in order to, to produce a dice, right? So they would cut it this way, this way, and this way. I find the most dangerous cut the one that's this way. And to be completely frank, I don't think it's completely necessary because the onion's already naturally cut in that way because of these layers. So really, I think all that's needed is a chop this way and this way, okay? So we'll do this, this part first. Now, depending on how big the dice that you want, um, if you want a bigger dice, you would um, basically make each cut. You know you're not cooking until the fire alarm goes off, right? <laughs> so that was from the turkey that's roasting right now. Basically, the bottom got really, really golden brown. I can show you. You see how it got really golden brown? So it was getting too dry and it started kind of burning so it made the fire alarm go off. So what I did was I just added some water to the bottom of the pan to allow it to kind of deglaze and not burn and steam uh, and steam instead. Okay, so back to our chopping. <laughs> so we, we went um, this way. At this point, the chef would go this way. I don't think it's necessary. I've actually had other chefs say that it's not necessary. So the thing with cooking I found is there's so many rules that can be contradictory. So you have to see what works for you and nothing is God's truth, trust me. So then the other way now, we're gonna chop it this way and you can see it's producing a nice fine dice. And the root is, is largely keeping the onion together. This little piece kind of, we're gonna chop it a little bit better in a second. Then I would just kind of put it on the side and finish chopping. And then this one kind of came loose, so I would just chop this by itself. All right, so now we're experts, right? So let's do this side. I actually kind of noticed the sharp, this knife is not as sharp as I'd want it to be. So I'm gonna sharpen it. and dried it and then we're gonna use that sharpener I just told you about. I should have sharpened it before I cut the cornbread. You'll see the difference of how easily my knife will cut after I use this. And then always um, carefully wipe off the uh, excess because it's gonna be kind of, it's like little metal shards, right? You don't want that in your food. Okay, so now watch this. So, I'll take this peel off. There's the root end. There's the stem end. Wow, look how much easier that is, right? And then we're gonna take the peel off. And of course, now I'm starting to cry. <laughs> so, one thing I've learned is if you have another water source close by, the chemicals within the onion that what, that get released when you cut it will be attracted to that water rather than the water in, in your eye and it'll make you cry less. It really does work. So I'm just having my sink turned on and then we'll dice this up. Oh 
Oh yeah, one more thing with knife skills. How do you hold the knife? You want the knife to be an extension of your hand. So if you hold it like this, it doesn't really feel like an extension of your hand. It kind of wobbles. But if you hold it with one thumb on one side and the forefinger like this on the other side, you've got real stability and it really feels like you have control and it feels like it's part of part of your hand. So that's how you want to hold a knife. And this time it went smoother. Our root and held on better. And uh, we got a nice dice for our stuffing. And now we'll just simply, uh, I just turned on my nonstick pan, medium high heat, put some olive oil, and um, a knife could also be used sort of to carry the ingredients um, to the pan. I'm gonna put my board a little bit closer so that I don't drop any. All right, and And then I um, recommend seasoning the um, onions with some salt. It'll help draw out some of the liquid and it'll make them caramelize faster. Okay, so now we're gonna um, pop up this wonderful celery. So this can be a little bit intimidating, right? Cause it's like, what the heck do I do with this? So I'm gonna show you how to chop this up. All right, celery chopping time. So all I did was rinse this in the sink. I'm gonna chop off the top because those kinds of tend to be some, you know, old yucky ends. And um, you could compost this. Um, and then I'm gonna chop off this part too because this tends to be like where a lot of the dirt is. It is very beautiful though. You could make a stamp out of this um, for little kids and it'll make a flower. And we're gonna rinse this again under the sink to get all this dirt off. Okay, and then so I would use the tough outer parts that are kind of almost have just a very strong flavor. They don't, they're not delicious raw. Um, I would use those for the stuffing. So these would be like the outer ones. And then I would use these um, for basically cutting them and then filling them with peanut butter or cream cheese. Um, and they make a healthy, delicious snack. So I'm gonna move these aside. And then in terms of chopping this, it's easier than the onion. So in this case, it's, you know, if you always want a cube, you want to basically cut in two, in perpendicular way. Once this way and these this way, and then you get cubes. So flat side, this one I felt is more dangerous because it will wobble, but I would do the flat side. And then, okay. And of course, celery is not like perfectly uniform throughout. So here I had to do like kind of like an extra cut just so to kind of even it out and then hold, hold the bunch together. You can even cut this in half and put the bunch together like this. It's an even more efficient way. And remember, keep your hands. Um, the knife is an extension of your hand. And there you go. That is Nice Skills 101. <laughs> Leave your comments or questions in the bottom. Okay, so one very other important skill when cutting is how do you move your knife and how do you protect your fingers? So claw, right? So you wanna hold this hand, basically your non-dominant hand, the one that's holding the food as a claw. Because if you keep your fingers like this, you could easily get a tip off, but like this, actually the knife cannot possibly cut it. And actually this finger then acts as a guide for the knife. So let me show you what I mean. So here we got the celery. I'm gonna cut it lengthwise. <clears throat> and then we're gonna, <coughs> excuse me. We're gonna hold it with our claw. And basically, my this, this hand is gonna advance back and this finger is gonna act as a guide for the knife. And I'm gonna move my fingers back how I want um, the, the size of the celery to be. 
This way you can't, you won't ever cut your fingers. 